Hello, and welcome to this video, which is about Squasher, which is a Dynamics plugin included with Cubase 11. Modern music production makes a lot of use of Dynamics processing to make the music sound bigger and louder. Squasher is a multi-band processor, which includes downwards and upwards compression. Let's take a look at it. So here we are in Cubase Pro 11, and we're gonna take a look at a few of the features that Squasher has. So first things first, I'm gonna insert it on this drum loop. So this is just fairly generic, uh, but nice disco drum loop. And here is the Squasher. So in its default, when it loads up, it's set with three bands turned on. So actually I'm gonna turn it down to just one band so this will affect all of the audio across all frequencies. I'm also going to expand that so you can see we've got some other settings here, attack and release drive and the gate, which is uh, pretty important. And also, oddly, the output is set to 6 dB, so you can hear that you'll hear a difference. Even if we turn this so there is no upwards or downwards compression, which I think is a bit disingenuous. So I'm going to set that back to zero. So we're hearing the difference. And now we're hearing no difference in volume. You're probably familiar with a standard downwards compressor, which reduces the dynamic range by decreasing high level sound. So we'll bring these down. And this is what we're seeing here. It's slightly unconventional, but basically you've got a threshold set in the normal manner, which you've probably seen previously. And we can move that. And then we've got the amount of downwards compression, which is set up to a percentage of 100, which is effectively a limiter. So you can control that. This is this is like the ratio control, as you can see, if you've seen the standard compressor's graph. Pretty plain, fair so far. So if I play that, we can hear the effect. You can hear it clamping down, and you can see this clamping down on that top end, and we can make it more severe by increasing the percentage or decreasing the threshold, whichever we want to do. So far, so normal. However, we've also got this upwards compression. And what this does is this increases the level of low level audio. And this is, for me, the interesting part of this, because it allows you to get a sound which sounds really massively loud. It really simulates what you hear when something's incredibly loud. And then the, the tails of it seem ridiculously loud as well so you can hear that and if i bring this up you'll hear what i mean so so you hear those low level details starting to come up and if i bring this up more So once we get this up to a certain level, you can see it really starts to work. And you can hear that. Listen to the sound of that with that on and then without. So the reverb, particularly on the congas, is really coming out because of the volume of that's being turned up. And you can see that getting turned up there. So this is the key to the way that this sounds. Because it's an upwards and downwards compressor, we really severely reduce the amount of dynamic range that the sound's got. And you can get those massive sounding synth hits, etc. So that's the first part of this, which is nice. So even if it was just that, I think it would be usable. But it gets better than that. So we've got three bands. So we can divide the audio into three separate bands. Now this one obviously is going to be a little crazy compared to the rest, so... Let's put this deck down to something more sane, like we were seeing previously, and about 50-50. Now this works separately across different frequencies. We can, if we want to bring out, let's say we wanted to bring out the real high end of those congas. You can bring them out, or do the opposite and just bring this right down. But you can hear it's having quite a drastic effect on the sound of this. With a bit of tweaking, as we'll see with the presets in a bit, there's plenty of fun to be had 
I think with a lot of these plugins, probably starting off with the presets and then tweaking them is the way to go because there's loads of controls to play around with. Things that I like, I really like the fact we've got a gate. So even if this was just a multi-band gate, this would be useful, for particularly if you can sidechain it, which you can. So just taking this as an example now, you can use this even if we turn the compression off. So let's just turn the compression off for a moment. So all of these are zero. So we're getting our audio passed pretty much unaltered. Just going to set those other two bands to zero dB. So at the moment, it's pretty much unchanged. But you can use the gate. So we can have a gate on the bass frequencies here. And you can hear it's cutting some of that or completely cut that out do the same with the top end just tweak that just let some of that through or some of that around there there's a So you can do some subtle alterations with these or you can go crazy and just totally eviscerate the center. So with a bit of playing around, depending on the source material you've got, there's, again, a lot of creative potential with this. This is an unusual plugin because it's both functional for kind of workmanlike tool use, but also it's quite creative. There's lots of creative uses you can use and I could double the length of this video by going through uh, some others. Now, as with frequency, this has multi sidechain. So we have different sidechains. So if we turn sidechaining on, so let's just turn this on at the moment, we have three separate signals you can send a sidechain to. So then you can control that and it can send to squ squasher or it can send to gate. So you could actually sidechain control let's say the base part of your loop so then that would get controlled by the signal which is coming in so then you can you've got all this creative potential from that kind of thing i'm covering that more in the frequency video because i think it's more easily seen in there but there's there's plenty of opportunity in fact i've used this already on a couple of mixes where i've been sending uh, sidechain gate control just to basically act as a, a very severe eq for some parts of a mix now I'm getting to be a big fan of using side chaining for mix automation to do the kind of things that just clean mixes up, etc. So, you know, a bit of ducking of frequencies here. This is not a bit of ducking of frequencies. This is like evisceration if you're using it for the gate, or you can use it for the squasher. So next up, I've got a synth sound. So this is a Halin Sonic. So it's using flux. So this is something that everybody should have because all your Halin Sonic SE should have uh, flux included with them. I believe, and there's just our basic sound. So it's just that kind of sound with a pulse and a short delay on there. Adding a squasher, in this case, on the synth exciter preset, instantly you can hear and you can see. So again, this is a good example of using the meters to see what you're hearing. So you can see that this upwards compression is bringing out all of that low end level wise. Um, sound and bringing that up so you can hear it and as a result we hear the long tails and the way that the sound changes as I guess the bit depth decreases in that sound so you can hear it gets a bit crunchier sounding and then finally it falls below the threshold and disappears well that's still working away so this has been really useful for getting those those really big kind of synth sounds in the break, in the middle of a track, etc. If you want something to sound enormous, a bit of experimentation with Squasher has, has definitely generated those kind of sounds. So here's an example from a track that I've been working on in the last couple of weeks or so. So you can just hear straight away what this kind of thing sounds like. So here's the sound without Squasher applied. And then here's the sound with squasher applied.
Next up, presets. So here we're just going to take a look at some of the presets which are included, which again, I don't think you should necessarily just stick to presets because you should hopefully learn to program and alter them yourself and tailor them to your own needs. But they're definitely a good starting place, particularly with a complicated effect such as Squasher. So here we have that same drum loop and we're going to start off with House Tops. And you can see that even though by default the gates are turned up to a high level so those bands don't get through, when you turn the gates down they're still pretty heavily compressed so you don't get the full level that you would get. So it's thinner even though it's less thin than with the gates turned all the way up. Etc. So that works pretty well on that loop. Next up, working on a kick, and here's the kick without squasher applied. And now with the kick two preset applied. So you can hear that's really, really changing that. Uh, we can change these mix levels. can hear it's having an enormous effect on there and even if we turn this down huge change in that sound if that's the kind of kick you're after sort of uh, noise terrorism is your business then definitely the place to go next up squasher working on a track this is the track you'll hear at the end of each of my videos you can hear with mask bus glue Tightening everything up, working as a working for most parts as a fairly standard multi-band compressor, but we've still got a low level of upwards compression as well. Although in a track with these kind of levels, you don't hear that much of it. There's a few like this, such as Master Bus Tight and Warm and also Mix Enhancer. So if we look at Mix Enhancer, we can see that will have a different effect and again these are going to vary depending on your track and you would want to fine tune these these are definitely not something you would just load up and go yeah i'm done with this but comparing it with it on and off so with it bypassed and by wave contrast there's also a couple of uh, slightly interesting ones, VHS recording. So you can hear these have an absolutely decimating effect on the sound. So again, listening to this. Probably something where the mix control would come into play because you don't necessarily want all of that in there, but you can make use of this master mix control to get some of that if you're trying to go for that Stranger Things vibe, etc. As a final example, working on some vocals. So these are from a new content pack which comes with Cubase 11. So let's take a listen to Vocal Magic, but first we'll hear the sample without. And then with. So you can hear the upwards compression working in there as well. And Warm Vocals is another preset that's worth a listen. And again, without that. But we need to generally to alter the output. So we're listening to the same peak level, but that's something that would need to be done. So you notice quite a lot of bottom end actually turns up at this point. So you'd probably need to apply some low filtering to, to control that. But that's where some of that breathiness and that warmth is coming from. So finally for this, let's take a look at the use of side chaining with Squasher. So here I've got something fairly straightforward. So we've got a kick and snare, which is set up on different tracks. And 
What I want is when the clap happens, so you can see this clap happens at the end of bar one. I don't like the clash between the mid-range of these two. So what I want Squasher to do is to remove some of the mid-range on this. I've already applied the Squasher and actually we've got an improved sound from it. So this is making this snare more powerful. So let's have a listen to that. So without it on there and then with, you can hear it's got a bit more power to it. Again, without. and width. So what we want is to turn down or possibly even remove the mid range. And we can do that with this side chain. So I've turned side chain on here. And importantly, we've got different side chain inputs we can pick. I've tended to stick with one for band one, two for band two, etc. Because otherwise, things get very confusing very quickly. So I'm saying side chain two is going to be sent to squasher. And now we can set this up and turn it on. So firstly, we're going to set it up, hit the cog, and then you have to pick the appropriate side chain in. So this is new in Cubase 11 for anything which has multi uh, side chain inputs. So frequency two has eight, one for each band. You can see that elsewhere on the channel. So here we're going to pick number two here, and then I'm going to add that side chain source, and that's going to be the clap track. So we just hit that, pick the clap. I'm going to make it pre-fader because it's just always a bit smoother to do that. It's one less thing to have to worry about. And now, once we turn this on, we'll see that when the clap plays, this band will change. So let's just move that over so you can see that. So you can see that's really coming down quite a lot compared to where it was. And if you look at the peak meter here, you can see the first two come to about where the mouse pointer is, and then it gets nowhere near. So we've got an automated mixing happening here. So now, whenever I change my arrangement, no matter what I do, if I put this clap in, then this will automatically move that snare out of the way for me with that tone that I want so the two fit together better. So it's not just volume automation, it's tonal automation that's working better for me. So obviously you can come up with loads of different ways of using this, but that's a, an example of how to do it. So you can use one element to control something else. So whenever I put this clap in an entire track, it would do that or any other elements which I felt conflicted with the snare tone-wise. So if you had something else that was conflicting maybe at the top end, then you could send that to the side chain three and then alter band three. Same for the bottom end, that kind of thing. So this is a bit like a dynamic EQ, but also while you're using Squasher, it means you don't have to also set up a dynamic EQ. And you can do quite a lot of work with this. There's there's a lot of possibilities here for doing things such as having interacting loops where the side chain controls whether one is present or the other and so on. So it can help automate a lot of things that happen without you having to actually create automation because I see a lot of people drawing in you know automation for each thing anytime a clap would appear you'd have to turn down the snare and then of course that's a pain because then if you decide the snare is too loud throughout the whole mix you've then got to alter all that automation and it's much easier to have something doing it all the time automatically. So there you have it you've seen the main features of Squasher and hopefully you've got a better idea as to whether or not it's going to help you in your music production workflow. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you again soon for more music tech tuition.